Let's go out to the job site. Hello, this is KP from EcoPanels. We are here at the shop today, headed to the job site in Jamestown, Tennessee. When we get there, the installation team will be putting up the roof panels, but we will be including uh, photos of the prior progress in this video. Let's go. So here we are in Jamestown, Tennessee. We're here at the job site and they're just finishing up the roof panels. They're at the point where they're in the last row last section of panels and this is where you make that adjustment just in case the roof panels are too long or too short this is where you'll get to do an adjustment do some trimming off that last row of panels to make this fit just perfectly we are here um, the owners is Hank and I'm going to introduce you to him here in just a minute so here we are inside of uh, Hank Flowers's this is Hank nice to meet you hey, Hank um, I would like to ask him what his next steps are, what his uh, next um, process is of, of finishing up the roof system. Okay. So what this is, uh, what we've built, is we're call, we call it the granny pod. It's for my mother-in-law. We're actually building her house. We've got some other renovations and things that we're doing here. And uh, we're trying to get this one online so that we can get her moved in and, and get up here. But right now, uh, the crew that's been here, they're just now finishing up the roof panels. Uh, but we have a few more steps because we opted to do a beam structure overhead that will have some exposed beams uh, during after the construction is finished and some of it won't be. So kind of have a mix of it. Yeah. But what that's caused us or, or part of the build is that overhead, you'll see that the air gap between, you know, we, we committed to the panels to be a certain size. We wanted an eight foot back wall. We wanted a 12 foot front wall. And then we utilize the beams with an interlocking bird's mouth at both ends so that it'll lock the structure together, okay? But that still left us because of the height of the beams. And, and we spec the beams out. That they're a 13 and a half inch beam. And the reason that they're 13 and a half is because we had a 25 foot span. So by code, this is kind of where we need to be. Now, what we'll end up doing is putting nailer blocks and nailers in this area and, and actually closing that up. And then at some point, after we've closed it up and, and dried it in from the outside, then we'll come back in with spray foam, and I'll have spray foam put all in all of the pockets around. But right now, the main main concern is is to get this thing dried in, uh, place some orders for windows and doors and all that other stuff while these guys are here. Uh, but now that we're, we finish up this and get that, then we'll be able to put the doors and windows in and be able to lock this thing up. We still have a little bit of interior framing to do. Uh, it's a very uh, efficient. We've got we got a, a extra room here, and we've got the main bedroom here in the kitchen in this room in the great room. So, so I'm curious uh, for him to tell you what he told me earlier was because he was doing a little bit of exposed beams. He's actually going to chase this down some, or or, so, or let me get my pointer. Let me get my pointer. All right, so what, what we'll end up having to do is we'll apply a nailer block along this surface or each beam, each section will have its own nailer block. And what that gives us is from the, the bottom of the nailer block to the very top, that will give us what we call a chase. I'll have a six and a half inch chase in this area that will allow me to run my overhead plumbing, my overhead electrical, uh, some actually some HVAC lines that will be in here. And then what we'll eventually end up doing is, is from this nailer to this nailer, we'll use a, tongue, a real nice exposed tongue and wood, uh, tongue and groove pine. And then from that point on, what's left over in the beam showing, yep. we'll clad this beam with some cedar. I actually want to do red cedar. So I got a pine. Is this yellow pine? This is all pine. Okay. Th these are now. There's some confusion in techno, uh, the techno of these. A lot of people say LVLs. That's exactly what I was going to say earlier. Th this is not no. an LVL. Uh -uh. An LVL carries a different load than a glue lamp. Okay, and so what we've utilized here is a glue, glue lamp, lamp beam. And if you start looking, solid. you can see the striations. No, this actually. Just this imagine, thing? imagine one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10 two before stacked that they've been planed oh. and stacked and glued oh. under pressure together and that's what gives it the strength okay. Okay. so hank um i was just wondering why you chose 
offset panels, that structured insulated panel. I am no stranger to alternative building. The home that I live in now, it's not SIP, but I had originally looked at SIP before I built that home, okay? And I understood the qualities of, of what was there, but I, at that, that time, I built an ICF home. Good home. We making our life plans and retiring and building this place in retirement for Tennessee, it became very evident to me that I needed to be, have a system that I could put in. And I'll give you an example. On, on my ICF home that I built, it took me nine days to dry that house in. And it's over a 3,000 square foot house. And so knowing that, I started looking at what were my alternatives in building that would get me the fastest building to utilize my time. Because okay. our home base is still in Texas, okay? And I'm here, mama's home doing her thing, mm -hmm. and I'm up here doing yeah. my thing. So what I needed to have was something that I could rely on a set time, uh -huh. time frame, okay? okay? The fact that you guys can take this from, uh, from the design that I gave you, put that package together, build this house at your facility, and then give it to me, told me that everything I needed to know that I could get my hands on it, and I could plan exactly what it was going to take me to be able to come up here, get the right kind of labor, manage, you know, people helping me to get that. I knew what it was going to take to do that. So SIP, I've known about SIP for a long time. Uh, like I said, I was going to do it on my original house. But when, when this came up, and I told my wife, and, and let me explain something. If, if you don't really understand SIP, if you look around, you, you'll start to see there's there's electrical involved there's boxes in here and if you was to look inside of the panels you'll you'll see the foam that's insulation involved in there but you also have an interior clad you have an exterior clad and we'll talk about the exterior clad here, here in a minute i guess but all of this work has already been done for you it's already prepared to that point it's, it's going to make and so looking even farther ahead when i start trimming out and I've got things here. I don't have to be fighting with insulation. I don't have to be fighting with interior clad. I can start affixing either a shiplap or a sheetrock or tongue and grip, whatever we decide on, on that on finish. You're ready. That's my wife's yeah. decision, not mine. Okay. <laughs> okay. So that's kind of why I went with the SIP because it was mainly the fact that I knew it was a good product. I knew that the capabilities of SIP, I knew that it would be perfect for this kind of climate and area that we're living, going to be living at in Tennessee, it was a no-brainer for me because I've built conventional. I understand I understand the entire process, but I realized that if I was building conventional, as I explained, all of these steps would have been a longer time for me to be here to take care of something. This way, it's already done. Sure. Okay. So you already kind of started the out, the outside skin. You started talking about that. So. That was my next question was why you chose the green board that's on the exterior well you're you're going to end up doing something you're going to end up doing something you're, you're going to have to cut you're going to have to put something out there that's going to protect the structure once again the time and timing involved in this I'm, I'm only coming in for a few weeks at a time getting as much work as i can get done and then I have to rely on this structure being protected and safe and ready until I can come back up yeah. here. Okay. I could, I realized the Tyvex on there, but I've seen Tyvex go on and I've seen a storm come through and I've seen Tyvex oh, go off. Yeah. This way I know with the zip, we've actually got a water, waterproof, you know, structure that I don't have to worry about. Now I will get as uh, metal on here as fast as I can, but it gives me a little bit more option for time, for time yeah. that, that I need to work with. So. Sometimes we don't always have this chosen, like what what color or what style metal you want to put on here. This gives you that time allowed to be able to make those decisions Correct. and not have to be in a hurry. Right, right. All right. So this is, concludes our video today here at uh, Hank Flowers' job site. I wanted to thank for everybody being here, listening and uh, watching our video. If you have any questions or any concerns or any kind of insights, uh, please, um, Attach that to our video and I'll get back to you as soon as it's good.